All right, let's go on to segment three. We're calling it Where's the Beef? Cedric, you and I are old enough to remember <laughs> Where's the Beef, but there's a Sarah big Peller. <laughs> that, yeah, there's a big beef going on out in LA, that being between Magic Johnson, the Lakers, everybody he left behind after he left uh, that uh, organization a couple weeks ago, well, now a month or so ago. This is this story just kind of keeps going, which you know you knew it was crazy at the time, Cedric, when he just up and says I'm done. But now here we are. He's talking about getting stabbed in the back by Rob Palinka, uh, all these different things. This story just doesn't stop. You know, and, and Magic went on the ESPN's first take with Stephen A. Smith and basically pulled the curtain <laughs> out and just let you see all the dysfunction in Laker Nation. Linda Rambis making calls. Rob Palenka saying that Magic doesn't work hard. Kobe silently working the background. <laughs> it is a monstrous circus in Laker land. The Lake Show is dead. Uh, Magic, I wanted to fire Luke Walton. Wow, you, you, you got to put that out there. Okay, Magic, that's fine. Here's my thing. If you claim to be such a Laker man and a Laker loyalist, why are you giving away all the secrets? I mean, we all have uh, dirt in our in our families that we are never going to share with friends or or the outsiders. But Magic Johnson, man, he he showed everything. And to me, I thought it was a bad look. It was great for journalism. Good. For, I'm glad Stephen A. Smith got that interview. It, it was must see television. But Magic Johnson, uh, if I'm a Laker fan, I've got to question the great Magic Johnson's loyalty to Laker Nation, to Jeannie Buss, and to the people that run that organization. It, it didn't come across as Magic, the lovable leader and the lovable Laker. It came across as Magic saying, I'm done with you guys, and this is what happened. It was a bad look, I thought. Good for journalism, really bad for Magic. Yeah, it, it, it sort of has uh, all the all the trappings of a, of a Hollywood flick, which I guess when you're out in la-la land, maybe that's the stuff that happens all the time. But yeah, Cedric, you're right. I mean, to me, you know, maybe all the stuff that Magic is saying is absolutely 100% accurate. I mean, I think that it's entirely possible it is. But I think if you're in his position, you, you were a Laker, you, you know, there might come, might come a day where you want to work in an NBA front office again. Those two things would make me think twice about like you said, Cedric, pulling back the curtain and just showing everybody what what you know you say is happening, I think it really uh, undermines the organization, obviously. But I think it also hurts Magic's chances of maybe ever having any sort of front office job again, uh, because you know who wants to run the risk that he pulls this again if he leaves you. So I, it's it's a mess. Uh, to me, it's one of those things that you know if you're a player there now, I mean they obviously recognize what's going on, but. I would have to think a lot of guys are sitting around going, oh my gosh, this is, you know, what have I gotten myself into? LeBron James picking the Lakers last year, and he just has to be beside himself about some of this. So it, it'll be interesting to see if the Lakers can make any headway in offseason free agency because of all of this going on. Are free agents still going to be pulled to L.A. because of L.A., you know, because of the brand as it has been for years? Or are they going to say, I don't want any part of that mess? It'll be interesting to see. All right, here's my where's the beef, Cedric. It is the all-defensive team in the NBA. All of these honors teams starting to come out. All-rookie team is out. We'll, we'll continue to see these come out in the coming days. But all-defensive team announced earlier this week. First team, Rudy Gobert, the great shot blocker from Utah. Paul George here in Oklahoma City. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo in uh, Milwaukee, uh, the good big job. guy. I did as best as I could, not as good as you. Marcus Smart, the guard from Boston, and uh, Eric Bledsoe, another Milwaukee guy on the first team. I got a little bit of a beef with those guards. I, I do have to say the fact that Milwaukee is getting recognized as a small market team, Oklahoma City is a small market team, Utah is a small market team, I like that. But, you know, Drew Holiday is a second teamer from New Orleans. He is fantastic defensively. I wonder if the big market of Boston, I mean, and I like Marcus Smart. I think he's really good defensively, right. but where, where's your beef, uh, Cedric? <laughs> where's Kawhi Leonard? <laughs> Excuse me, where's Kawhi Leonard on that team? Yeah. Kawhi Leonard is the best defender in the NBA. And Kawhi Leonard not only uh, has to carry the burden of scoring in Toronto at 26 points a game, 
but he also has to to guard the other team's best perimeter player and he does it and he does it great uh have you seen what have you seen what the greek freaks numbers are in this series with Kawhi leonard guarding him he can't score on him and, and Kawhi's given up like five inches to him Kawhi leonard is the best two-way player in the league he should have been on the first team um I think Draymond Green should probably be on the first team. Uh, I think they did a good job. I think they wanted to, re- like you said, reward the small market guys. Uh, Drew Holiday is the best guard, defending guard in the NBA right now. He's taking Chris Paul's title from him. Yeah. I think Drew Holiday, Antetokounmpo, Greek Freak, Draymond, Kawhi Leonard, Gobert, that would have been my five. It, you, what you say about Kawhi is is right. It's hard to ignore. You know, he's he's got that cyborg quality to him. You know, he's just he's he's, quiet. he just locks in and he just does his job. And you know, obviously the the offense, everybody wants to talk about that, but he's still so good defensively. And when they do these when they do these all uh, NBA teams, they do it by the traditional uh, positions: a center, two forwards, two guards. I wonder if that, as much as anything, causes a problem. You don't want to necessarily go five guards or five big men, obviously, but you know the way that the, the league is now, everybody switches so much. The, you know, who guards who and how you're defending teams is just so different than it used to be. I don't know how you address that when you're picking teams and you, you have those positions, but it seems like where you're talking about especially the defensive team, maybe that area, as much as anything, needs to have some flex to it uh, with those positions because rookies, yeah, go ahead and pick a center, two forwards, two guards. I'm fine with that. But that all-defensive team, that could be a little more flexible, Cedric. I think so, too. I, I think the key is to get the best five guys on that team. Yeah. I don't care what position they are. If they're five guards, uh, that shouldn't matter nowadays because if you look at it, Jen, The game is so European now. Everybody's shooting threes. You got seven foot guys like MB shooting threes. And you're not really based as much as you were when we were growing up. The award was based on rebounds and block shots. Nowadays, there's so many threes being hoisted up that blocks are down overall and rebounds are down. Uh, The next time you watch a basketball game, uh, an NBA game, count the amount of rebounds that hit that bounce on the floor before somebody retrieves them. That's why that's the European influence. So many long rebounds, so many threes being hoisted up. And when we were growing up, uh, guys like Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone and Charles Barkley, those balls would never hit the ground. They were grabbing them off the top of the rim. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. Well, those teams will keep coming out. Maybe we'll get to talk more about that next week. NBA Finals will be Uh, almost upon us. We'll have lots of NBA talk. I'm sure there'll be other stuff going on too. So you want to stay with us? Writer's Block will be back at it next week. We hope to see you then.